Um, juggling. <laughs> juggling. Good morning, everybody. My name is Justin Chappell. I'm the culinary director at Food & Wine, and I'm also the resident mad genius and host of this show, Mad Genius Live. Um, we are a live show, so I expect that you tune in <laughs> every week at 11.30, and please follow along. Send us your questions, your comments, your concerns um, using the hashtag Mad Genius Live. Um, you saw in that little teaser there that I was juggling avocados. Very much. Um, it's going to be my new career is juggling <laughs> two things, not three. Um, I hear it's a trend. It's starting now. Um, it's more impressive with two. Somehow. It's definitely yeah. more impressive with two than three, I promise. Um, I have with me the wonderful Kelsey Youngman, uh, Food and Wine's test kitchen manager here in New York. City, and she is joining me for this very special episode where we are talking about everything avocado. Um, not everything avocado, I'm lying. We are talking avocado basics. We're gonna talk about how to buy them and how to cut them. Yeah, we're both from California and we both love avocados. Almost, Obsessed with them. Almost every morning in the test kitchen we have avocados on like sourdough or wasa with whatever hot sauce we love at the moment, so. Which right now, We're what we oh. are huge fans of a hot sauce that we made um, in the kitchen here with to Chef Todd Richards. Yeah, we actually just made a six times batch. Six times <laughs> batch. So if Todd Richards is watching, somebody tag him in the comments. Yeah. Um, tag Todd Richards in the comments. He has a new book out called Soul. And we had him here in the kitchen for a video and we made his hot sauce and we loved it so much that um, David, our test kitchen assistant here in New York City, just made a six times batch yesterday. And we're gonna eat it all. <laughs> and we're gonna eat it all, especially on avocados. Um, okay, so should we get started? Yeah. Um, so we're talking avocados, like we had just mentioned, and the first thing we wanna talk about when we talk about avocados is how to buy them. Um, I actually get a lot of um, questions over social media. People reach out on Twitter and Facebook, and they say, how do I buy the, a perfect avocado? How do I know when it's ripe? And for me, I don't know what it is. It's just, I think, experience, because yeah. I eat so many of them that I just know when well, I Well, actually, it. when we were setting up, he was, picking up different avocados and he's like, mm, salad. No, this is perfect with guac. It's like the avocado whisperer. Like once you get a feel, then you, you know what they're right for. It just kind of goes that way. And then yeah. it was funny because Kelsey picked up one and she was like, yeah, no, this, this one's right for guacamole. Yeah. So anyways, but let's talk about um, what you look for when you're buying avocados at the store. So we got John over here on camera A. I don't know if that's camera A. Somebody tell me, is this, which camera's A, which camera's B, or are we calling them one and two? I don't know. Um, so get a close-up on these avocados. We have four of them here. So these are four different stages um, of the avocado ripening process. So when it comes off a tree, it's very, very green um, and very firm. And so that's like this one here. So it's very green, it's very firm. You could kind of, it doesn't have any give at all. There might be little spots where it's starting to get brown. Um, I should, it should be noted that we're actually specifically talking about Haas avocados. Yeah. Today, there are, there are multiple kinds of avocados out there, but we're talking about the one and only Haas avocado. Buttery and delicious. Buttery and delicious. <laughs> Hashtag buttery and delicious. Yeah. That's perfect. Somebody write that down. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can see it's green, it's really firm. So when you, if you buy it like this, which you totally can, when it looks like this, it doesn't mean don't buy me. What it means is buy me and then let me ripen in your kitchen. So some people put it into a brown paper bag. Yeah. Some people just leave it on the counter. I just literally just put it on the counter. Um, and it, from this point, in about three days, it'll be ready to go. And if you put it next to your onions or your bananas, that'll help it ripen a little faster because they let off a gas called ethylene, so it speeds up the ripening. Right. Uh, to that point, yeah. If you have a ripe avocado, do not store them next to bananas or tomatoes because all the things are gonna get too overripe. Yeah. Um, okay, so the second stage here, this is what um, is called breaking, um, which means almost ripe. Um, it's not quite ripe, it looks really ripe, but what you'll notice is it does have that really dark color that you wanna look for in a ripe avocado, but one thing that should be noted is the shine. Do you see how shiny it is yeah. here? So to me, um, that's a really good indicator that the avocado is breaking, um, and it should just feel that. It's, it's still pretty firm. It's still really firm. Um, it doesn't really get, it might give in a couple spots, but it doesn't give all over. Um, so then third is you have ripe. So this is a ripe avocado. You could see the color kind of, it's dulled a little bit. It's not quite as shiny. Um, it's brown all over. Um, and when you kind of squeeze it in your hand, um, you'll notice that it barely gives. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things I wanna point out is, don't be an avocado bruiser. <laughs> if you're watching and you're an avocado bruiser, 
don't raise your hand because you'll get yelled at. <laughs> Respect the other people buying Res avocados. Exactly, and that's what it's about because a lot of people go into the grocery store and then they're squeezing and they're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And then what you're doing is you're creating all sorts of indentations under the skin Utensil. and those indentations become bruises. Yeah. And they start to turn brown. And as a matter of fact, I, we bought all of these, I bought all of these last night and some of them might have bruises. When we cut into them, some of these avocados might be bruised because of the other people at the store who are bruising them. <laughs> but it's okay, just cut away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so lastly, we have an overripe avocado, uh, which doesn't mean it's a bad avocado because it still might taste okay. But what you'll notice is it starts to change color all over and get these like really kind of gray spots. And it's kind of hard to see on video, but you'll notice like here's an indentation, mm. here's a little indentation. And that that's a good sign that it's a little overripe. And it's getting kind of dull, less, Lots of a shine. Totally. Yeah. Okay, so those are the things you look for when you're buying avocado. One more thing, sorry, I wanted to point out. Um, this is something that Kelsey brought up which we should talk about because everybody talks about it. So one of the things that you can um, do when you're at the grocery store is, oh yeah, there's a good one. So you see this little tab, show John here. So you can see the little stem end. If it's really firm, the stem won't give it all. It's like pretty in there. Yeah. If it's breaking, you can kind of wiggle it a little. And when it's ready, it'll it be brown right and it'll pop right out. I tend to buy my avocados at this stage when they're breaking and they have green under the stem because um, then I don't have to eat it that night. Right, exactly. Um, you can kind of let it hang out. But if you're looking for, you, you definitely want to get it um, where the little stem end pops right out like that yeah. um, if you plan on eating it that day. Okay, so now we're cutting an avocado. So um, the way I like to do it is I cut it in my hand like this spin it around, um, and then you divide it into two, just like that. Um, and then I like to take out the pit using my knife. So I kind of pop my knife right into it. Another benefit of a sharp knife, it's much safer. Totally, you definitely, and use a knife that's not too big, one that you feel comfortable using. Um, and then a lot of people can pull it off, I pull it off just like that. What some people do, um, and I recommend it um, for those of you who are maybe unfamiliar with taking an avocado pit off a knife, is you just, oops. You just throw it. <laughs> just throw it across the room. <laughs> no, just tap the um, heel of your knife either on um, a wooden bowl or the side of a garbage can, which we won't do here because we're on video, and it comes off pretty easily. So that's how you can pit an avocado. Another way to pit an avocado, will you hand me a towel there? Yeah. Just wanna wipe off my hand here, is if you're uncomfortable kind of holding it in your hand, you don't want to get avocado hand. Ooh. Avocado hand is a bad thing. Um, it's where you accidentally cut yourself opening an avocado. You can actually leave the avocado right onto a work surface, put your knife in, and do it this way. So you spin it around just like you would if, if it was in your hand. But in this case, I want to show you how to remove the pits differently. So I cut it horizontally. I'm going to rotate it, and then I'm going to cut it horizontally again. And this technique yields four pieces of avocado, just like that. But best of all is your pit just pops right out, just like that. Magic. So this is great if you plan to slice your avocado, if you plan to dice it. Um, this, of course, is what I do when I want to eat it with a spoon, just a little salt and pepper, maybe the my homemade furikake, which you can get the recipe for on foodwine.com. Yeah. I like to brush it with a little olive oil, put my furikake on top, and it's good to go. Okay, the third way um, we cut avocados is, um, I split it in half just like this, and then we cut it in the skin. So I'm gonna cut it again, just like this, and take out the pit. So we have two halves here. Ooh, that's a pretty one. Beautiful. Beautiful avocado. But this is actually a good, um, this is a good side by side here. If you look at this one, which happens to be, um, this one is barely ripe, I would say, and you could tell because it's very bright green, mm -hmm. whereas like this one's starting to turn a little bit brown because it's more ripe, you see that? So this one is like almost overripe. I would say this one is perfectly ripe and then this one's just barely ripe. Um, so then uh, there's two ways that, two other ways. So if you're gonna slice it into, or I'm sorry, if you're going to dice the avocado, um, you can do it in the skin, just be very careful I can use this knife because I'm very comfortable. I cook for a living. But if not, you can use a smaller knife, like a paring knife. It works well, too. And you just cut it right inside the skin, just like this. And then you take a spoon. Will you just hand me um, that little bowl there? Yeah. And then you scoop it out right into a bowl. Perfect. Just like that.
And then, of course, save your avocado skin and compost it. Um, lastly, what I like to do is, I'm actually going to use a bigger knife here. I mean a bigger spoon. Is you can take a large spoon and you can actually scoop out the whole thing. And this is great if you want to cut chunks or if you want to cut um, big slices or wedges. Um, I use this when I'm doing uh, making it for salad sometimes, which of course we're going to do a salad here. And then that's a really easy way of slicing your avocado, just like that. Beautiful. So there you go. You have the four stages of buying an avocado. So these are this is what you're going to look for in the store. Here's how you prep it at home. And now we're going to show you two very simple recipes um, for making that, them using them at home. All the things avocado. Obviously, you can make avocado toast. You can deep fry avocado. You can really do anything with it. You can make avocado mayonnaise, which I have a recipe for in my new book. Mm -hmm. Just cook it. Just cook it. Um, just buy it. Just buy it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's start with avocado. So first of all, um, for our second recipe, Kelsey, I'm going to need some segmented grapefruit. Perfect. So do why don't you just do that? Um, and I'm going to make some guacamole. So uh, we are making my charred pineapple guacamole from uh, Mad Genius Tips, there's a cookbook that came out a couple years ago. Um, I think we're going to drop a link in the comments. Uh, I hope so. Somebody let me know if we do not, because <laughs> we will get the recipe up on foodwine.com so that you can make it at home. Um, so here's a couple tricks for making guacamole at home. So obviously, you can just put the avocado in a bowl and mash it with your hand. Um, but another trick, something else that you can do is, um, and this is actually, you see this has a little brown on the outside. Yeah. That's okay. Ugly fruit is okay. Ugly fruit still is still delicious. All you So if you cut open an avocado and it does have brown spots, that does not mean it's bad. Just taste a little corner of it. So like scoop off a little corner, taste it. As long as it tastes fine and it doesn't taste overripe, then it's totally edible and go ahead and eat it. And it's probably actually, if it's at that stage, it's probably ideal for guacamole. So sometimes what I like to do is I just like to take a whisk and it works really quick. And I like a chunky guac. so. Just like that, you have chunky yeah. guacamole. It's really, really easy. Or, or if you happen to be a mad genius like me, you and you're going to plan to make a ton of guacamole, which I make so much in the summertime. Um, I, every time I have a barbecue, I make a ton of it. Um, I take a baking rack, just like this, and I put it over my guac bowl. And then I take an avocado half like this. And this is, I'm talking, if you're making like enough for 10 people, 12 people, and you don't want to scoop it all out, you just press it right through the baking sheet, mash it just like that, scrape it, give it a little tap, and you literally don't have to mash it, you don't have to dice it. And I mean, I could show it to you again. We have one more ripe avocado here that I can easily do again. Put it right on top of the baking rack. Mash it in, push it through, and just like that, you have a whole batch of guacamole. Ooh. And I'm just going to add in some other ingredients because we still have one more recipe we want to get to. So like I said, this is my charred pineapple guacamole. So I just took two slices of pineapple, charred it in a um, cast iron skillet or on a grill, diced it up, and I'm going to add it to my avocado here. I'm going to add a little bit of red onion here, right in there. I'm going to chop a little cilantro because I don't think you can, you should have guacamole without cilantro. Really? I am very opinionated on cilantro and guacamole. Okay. But that said, if you're at home and you don't like cilantro, don't put it in. I don't like cilantro. Some people are <laughs> guacamole purists and they literally just put, um, uh, I'm sorry, avocado, salt, pepper, and that's it. Yeah. And maybe a little lime juice. I um, want plenty of lime. Right. Little onion, little avocado. Some people don't even put onion in their guacamole. All right, some lime juice. Will you just hand me that serving bowl for the guac over there? Yeah. I know your hands are full of grapefruit here. Beautiful. Though. Mix it in. And just like that, with a little salt and pepper. There you go. We have some chips. Oops, that was real flaky salt here. I'm going to let you mix that. Okay. A little pepper. And that's it. You have this really awesome, delicious charred pineapple guacamole. We showed you um, a couple ways of chopping it and mashing it for your guac. 
And there you go, that's it. So let's do round two here. We got another recipe here. Kelsey's just gonna put that up because we have a crew back here with thumbs up because they're gonna come eat guacamole after. Um, okay, so this next recipe is from my new book, which just came out. I'm gonna show it. I'm doing a little self-promotion here. This is my new book. It's called Just Cook It. It's available now. Hopefully we could drop a link in the comments. Um, I'm making a recipe from it that I'm obsessed with and it includes avocado. Um, so this is an avocado, <clears throat> excuse me, avocado, grapefruit, and crab with a K salad. <laughs> um, people might think I'm crazy for using this ingredient, but it's one of my favorites. Um, crab is imitation crab meat. Um, there's a really beautiful picture of it. Um, it's a really simple recipe. It's really delicious. Growing up, um, we ate this all the time. It was like a snack. My grandma would buy imitation crab meat. It looks like this. Um, so you could buy it in chunks like this. You can also buy it in sticks and just tear it up or chop it up. Everybody knows what it is. It's the star of a California roll. Um, if you get you know, a regular California roll from um, the sushi place, it, it's the star. It's what's in the middle. Um, sometimes it's chopped up. Sometimes it's a crab stick. Um, and I love it. And it's made from Pollock. I mean, uh, Pollock. <laughs> Excuse me, it's made from Pollock. That is not okay. Um, and it has different f flavorings in it. Crab seasoning, which I don't know what that is, but it's fine because I grew up eating this and I think it was, it was always delicious as a kid. It brings back a lot of memories. Um, and then I'm just gonna slice up more. Do you wanna layer in the um, yeah. grapefruit there? Absolutely. I'm just cutting these into wedges. I like to cut them into wedges um, because then you get big chunks of avocado, but if you're feeding kids and they like it and you want to cut it into little chunks, you could just cut them into smaller pieces like that. And you could just peel the avocado and I just layer it all up there. And when Kelsey was segmenting this, what she did yeah. was, if you get a close up here, look at all the juice in that bowl still. I just squeezed the juice out of the... Because that juice right. is actually going to be what, the, what we make the dressing out of. It's basically the acid in your dressing. Okay, so we have our grapefruit juice. Do you wanna hit it with a little salt and pepper? Yes. And I'm gonna do some chives because it's a really simple recipe here. And you're gonna need a little extra virgin olive oil. I have a whisk. Yes, I have a little whisk here for you, one of my favorites. Aww. I'm gonna add a little chive. I'll put a little chive here. And then when you're done, you could just drizzle it on top. Okay. And we'll put it here. Cause I'm gonna let John get a close up of it. One of my favorite salads in the world. It's beautiful, so fresh. It's really fresh, it's really flavorful because the avocado is creamy and buttery. And so you actually don't need a lot of olive oil because right. you're getting, you're, you're still getting the good fats from the avocado. And then you just drizzle a little on top. I'm gonna go behind you. Beautiful. And with every, with and and if you feel like you have too much dressing, yeah. you don't need to use it because some some grapefruits are um, much juicier than others. And I just like to hit it with a little flaky salt. There's Malden salt, which is really great. This one happens to be Jacobson sea salt um, from the Northwest, and that's it. Beautiful. And it comes together in like five minutes. The whole the whole salad yeah. here. Um, and that's it. So, is there? Are there any? Do we have any questions about avocados? What's your favorite way to use avocados? Eat avocados. Yes. <laughs> For next week, we yeah. would love to know what is your favorite way to eat avocado. What's your favorite way to serve avocado? Um, and we will answer all of your avocado questions in the comments, even after we end the show, which is now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all of you. We're gonna wrap up the show. Thank you so much for watching. Tune in next week um, because we're talking skewers and all the ways of using them. Um, all right, everyone get in here and eat some guacamole. Eat some guacamole.